So astounding are the facts in this connection, that it would seem as though the Creator, himself had electrically designed this planet. Inventors don't have time for married life. It's not the love you make, it's the love you give. Great moments are born great apart unity. You may live to see man-made horrors beyond your comprehension. The gift of mental power comes from God, divine being, and if we concentrate our minds on that truth, we become in tune with this great power. My mother had taught me to seek all truth in the Bible. The individual is ephemeral, races and nations come and pass away, but man remains. What one man calls God, another calls the laws of physics. Today's scientists have substituted mathematics for experiments, and they wander off through equation after equation, and eventually build a structure which has no relation to reality. Invention is the most important product of man's creative brain. The ultimate purpose is the complete mastery of mind over the material world, the harnessing of human nature to human needs. We crave for new sensations but soon become indifferent to them. The wonders of yesterday are today common occurrences. If you only knew the magnificence of the three, six and nine, then you would have the key to the universe. Life is and will ever remain an equation incapable of solution, but it contains certain known factors. Let the future tell the truth, and evaluate each one according to his work and accomplishments. The present is theirs, the future, for which I have really worked is mine. All that was great in the past was ridiculed, condemned, combated, suppressed, only to emerge all the more powerfully, all the more triumphantly from the struggle. Our virtues and our failings are inseparable, like force and matter. When they separate, man is no more. One must be sane to think clearly, but one can think deeply and be quite insane. I do not think you can name many great inventions that have been made by married men. Be alone, that is the secret of invention, be alone, that is when ideas are born. My brain is only a receiver, in the universe there is a core from which we obtain knowledge, strength and inspiration. I have not penetrated into the secrets of this core, but I know that it exists. Of all things, I liked books best. If your hate could be turned into electricity, it would light up the whole world. The day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, it will make more progress in one decade than in all the previous centuries of its existence. The present is theirs, the future, for which I really worked, is mine. The scientists of today think deeply instead of clearly. One must be sane to think clearly, but one can think deeply and be quite insane. I don't care that they stole my idea. I care that they don't have any of their own. 
If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency and vibration. Marconi is a good fellow. Let him continue. He is using 17 of my patents. Most persons are so absorbed in the contemplation of the outside world that they are wholly oblivious to what is passing on within themselves. But instinct is something which transcends knowledge. We have, undoubtedly, certain finer fibers that enable us to perceive truths when logical deduction, or any other willful effort of the brain, is futile. Most certainly, some planets are not inhabited, but others are, and among these there must exist life under all conditions and phases of development. Every living being is an engine geared to the wheelwork of the universe. Though seemingly affected only by its immediate surrounding, the sphere of external influence extends to infinite distance. The carrying out into practice of accrued ideas is being generally done is, I hold, nothing but a waste of energy, money and time. The idea of atomic energy is illusionary but it has taken so powerful a hold on the minds, that although I have preached against it for 25 years, there are still some who believe it to be realizable. There is something within me that might be illusion as it is often case with young delighted people, but if I would be fortunate to achieve some of my ideals, it would be on the behalf of the whole of humanity. The progressive development of man is vitally dependent on invention. It is the most important product of his creative brain. When natural inclination develops into a passionate desire, one advances towards his goal in seven league boots. As I review the events of my past life I realize how subtle are the influences that shape our destinies. One may feel a sudden wave of sadness and rake his brain for an explanation when he might have noticed that it was caused by a cloud cutting off the rays of the sun. It is not in the shallow physical imitation of men that women will assert first their equality and later their superiority, but in the awakening of the intellect of women. Peace can only come as a natural consequence of universal enlightenment and merging of races, and we are still far from this blissful realization. The progressive development of man is vitally dependent on invention. These are only new devices for putting the weak at the mercy of the strong. I, had, admired the works of artists, but to my mind, they were only shadows and semblances. The inventor, I thought, gives to the world creations which are palpable, which live and work. One has to be sane to think clearly, but one can think deeply and be quite insane. I am credited with being one of the hardest workers and perhaps I am, if thought is the equivalent of labor, for I have devoted to it almost all of my waking hours. My project was retarded by laws of nature. The world was not prepared for it. It was too far ahead of time. But the same laws will prevail in the end and make it a triumphal success. 
There is scarcely a subject that cannot be mathematically treated and the effects calculated or the results determined beforehand from the available theoretical and practical data. and led me to finally recognize that I was but an automaton devoid of free will in thought and action and merely responsible to the forces of the environment. The by far greater number of human beings are never aware of what is passing around and within them, and millions fall victims of disease and die prematurely just on this account. Merciless is the law of nature, and rapidly and irresistibly we are drawn to our doom. My belief is firm in a law of compensation. The true rewards are ever in proportion to the labor and sacrifices made. Deficient observation is merely a form of ignorance and responsible for the many morbid notions and foolish ideas prevailing. <laughs>